Hello and welcome back to This is the Police. I'm on day four and uh, in the first episode I had a press conference where I was a little bit honest, I guess, where he was, I made the character kind of upset about retiring and, you know, just kind of went through the day, the first few tutorials. Uh, so mm, let's see where this day takes me, I guess. Whenever I'm alone at home, and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? To get to my front door, the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop, jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Laura doesn't go in for religion either. But according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles deserve at least a minute of attention. She patiently listens to them, asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch, and lit up a cigar. But a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly ask them not to bother me. Today I'm a little rougher still. Shut the door on his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. In my life, even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally when a wife is going to leave home, she'll make a scene or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. But Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but all three of our sons supported me. The in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. The fellow Laura ran off with is young enough to be her son. Oh. I hear he's 30 years old. Of all the possible information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get hit with that. Fortunately, Laura's mother doesn't like the way it sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. So we have an agreement. Sally's gonna track down Laura and try to reason with her, and we'll arrange a meeting. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to not do anything stupid, which of course means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a mm. phone book. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. I don't what's going on. Hello. Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, is there any news? That's what I wanted to ask you. Have you found anything? An address? Phone number? Have you spoken to her? Don't worry, Jack. I've narrowed the range to two suspects, or whatever you like to say at your police building. At my police building, we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends. Oh, you're an old man, Jack. <laughs> Come to your senses. They'd give us straight odds on the street. But I've got more energy, Jack. Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. And you have nothing, Jack. You don't even have a hobby. You got no passion. It's why Laura left you. Let's not go back into that, Sally. Find my wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call, and my patience is running thin. This guy's kind of Laura, a if you've stopped loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay? <laughs> this guy's life is kind of in shambles. Ooh. There was a fire at my daughter's school and my little girl was seriously burned. She's intentions here. Yes. Strips. Well, this guy's tired. Alrighty, I think we're good to go. I have this shift is really overstaffed. Oh, we played the sexy uh, Kermit the Frog last time. Let's go with that snazzy 70s wallpaper. 
Mm. If I can click it, there we go. Oh, that was fast. Destruction of property. City Hall parking lot. A member of the city's cleaning crew saw an elderly man approaching some expensive cars in the parking lot, carrying a large, long iron rod. The whole street could hear him shouting, Thieves! Bloodsuckers! So... I think we could just send one person on this. So I'm actually going to send... You know, I'm going to send Price, because I don't care about her. And... I'll send Purdy. Someone commits a serious crime and flees the scene. The case goes to your detectives. Oh, ghetto. They investigate the crime scene, interview witnesses, and gather whatever information seems pertinent. One of your detectives will be the lead investigator in the case. You can assign additional detectives in any case who will work under the lead investigator to subordinates. The more professional the lead investigator, the more effective the team. Okay, so I'm going to make Cross the lead, and I want to make Armstrong a uh, subordinate. Fire all black cops. Okay. From City Hall. A racist gang has recently made some trouble in the city. They're capturing black townspeople and beating them to death. They recently sent a message to the local radio station promising to kill all the black doctors, firemen, and police. We don't need any more dead police, especially not mere months before the election. The racists are gaining more and more followers. Even some of our citizens report and support them. You have to fire all your black employees over the next day due to mounting racial tensions. Ooh, I don't want to. You see, at the heart, it's probably going to bite me, but no. I have good, hard-working police officers that are of all race and colors. Gas station surveillance counter recorded a car that's on the stolen vehicles list. So let's send Trevor out there. Trevor. And Austin. Um, oh, investigation has started. Okay, detectives have interviewed witnesses, collected evidence from the scene, and are pursuing the investigation. Expect results. Okay, so Eric Graham, a drunk witness, said they drove by in a sedan and they shot like a machine gun. I didn't see much. Mr. Clayton said I only heard a few muffled shots. Mr. Carr said he got what he deserved. He's been causing trouble for a long time in recent. There's been lots of cruising, cursing, and carrying on. I don't remember the car, and the neighborhood is quiet. I never heard any shots. Mr. Carpenter. The police these days don't do anything, or do nothing. I almost died myself. I went to buy some medicine, and was nearly hit by some idiot's car. Okay, there's a guy in coming out the thing, and then there's a man dead. So, i close that. I don't know what to do. Uh, yeah, good job. I should just let Price go and get a better police officer. I don't know why they'd keep somebody with field assignments too. Two days. Uh, desire. Oh, oh! The driver is nowhere to be seen. Wait at a safe distance for the driver to appear. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Officer unharmed, civilians unharmed. Boost. Okay, suspicious individual. Cora Ramsey, mother of several children, has expressed her concerns about a suspicious man wearing bifocals. Seated on a bench beside a playground. He's been watching the children for over an hour and has taken several photographs of them. Oh yeah. Get out there, Kochi. And Asana. Creeper. Go get him. Can I add more detectives to it? Oh, you can. Can I remove them? I can. Nice. So I just throw all of them on it. What the heck? Why not? If I can remove them any time, what does it matter? It's just an individual. Yeah, creepers. Get that experience. 
Uh, Mr. Boyd, I'm bringing Friedberg's first martial arts club in for the first exhibition. I want to hold a sparring match where one of my students takes on your toughest cop. After the first fight, I'll teach your man a few tricks, something that will help him out on the streets. I'm going to wait for Kochi. So it's night time. It's not the end of the day yet, but it's night time. Homicide report. Your detectives present frames different versions of what might have happened at the crime scene. Proceed. Open investigations. They get it wrong half the time, but a good cop can separate facts from fiction. They know how to look at the case materials. The more professional detectives working on your investigation, the better their instincts. To get your specifics, you'll need to figure out the true sequence of events on the crime scene using the frames you think Likely, sometimes with a little guesswork thrown in, if you add up all the, but the sequence fails, you are likely telling your own story. You need to figure out the true sequence of events at the crime scene using the frames you think likely, sometimes with a little guesswork thrown in. If you add up all the but the sequence fails, you're probably telling the wrong story. Uh, drug lord. I'm thinking that. That and then that. Oh, there's a black activist. Oh, the one that's with the racists in the area. Yeah, it had to be this order. Can I. Do I. What do I do? Do I switch them around? Do I get them right? Oh. When an investigation pans out, you have yourself a suspect. Sometimes there's more than one, but in this case, which is narrowed down to a single candidate. The suspect is Travis Horton, an known racist who's already have, or already has several previous convictions. So what do I do? Objectives have some information on the whereabouts of the suspect. Sometimes there might be a number of locations to choose from. To carry out the arrest, two officers must escort the lead investigator to apprehend the, the suspect. If the lead investigator is not on duty, the arrest will have to wait, but remember that fugitives won't sit patiently until your schedule clears. Also remember that criminals react in different ways. A frightened thief is likely to surrender as soon as the, ga the game is up. A brutal killer might want to see just how many he can take with him. With more dangerous criminals, it's safe to send experienced officers, even the SWAT team as you see fit. Since I won't really need them, I'm going to send the SWAT team. I'm going to send Yancey and Asano. Yancey. Ooh, Kevin's throat bar. Bartender reports that a couple dancers started fighting over tips, and a cat fight broke <laughs> out right on stage. Isn't that a little insulting? I'm going to send Purdy and Austin and Price. No, I clicked there off. Oh, octopus. A bartender reported that a fight has broken out between a patron and the bar's bouncer. The man, apparently drunk, had climbed onto the stage while a local singer was performing and tried to sing to duet with her. Send Trebor and Price. And hope nothing else comes up. Okay. I think we're good. Uh, Chief, I just about nailed the jab. <laughs> That's a little racist. But he was too fast for me and won in points. I don't really understand all the rules, so I can't keep track of points very well. But he was alright. He even showed me a few tricks after the match. I got carried away a little and pulled my back. Think I can do a day off? Did she get a boost? Looks like we have a oh. situation here. <laughs> on this stage, there are two strippers going at it, and it's gone beyond arguing to a full-on cat fight. This looks like a man. Oh no, I'm just not wearing a shirt. The bouncer is fast asleep, clearly too wasted to handle the situation. The drunken patrons are happily watching the fight. Draw your surface wizard. Uh, oh! Strippers continue fighting, oblivious to the police presence. Don't interfere! Go, go, go! Step on the stage and separate the girls. They escaped? How did they escape? You guys suck. Off cinder cut. Sprints. You may able to arrest all suspects. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way to train your detectives. Just throw everybody on the case. If you can get it in one day. Fight. Yeah. 
Good job. Oh, end of day. Cheer. Okay. Order to work tomorrow. Order to work tomorrow. Nah. Ship day. Um. End the day. Checkpoint. Retired police officer. Thomas Blaine shoots a pregnant woman. Oh. Thomas Blaine explains, I thought she was a suicide bomber. Mary Rogers City has no problems at all with races. Even though the city hall itself is saying you need to get rid of them. Why would a man need a barn to store all the stuff you can't bring home? About 30 years ago, back when I was young and interested in farming, I carried all kinds of junk home. After a day in the field, I'd come home with buckets, shovels, dirty boots and clothes, and instantly transform the living room. But even back then, there's something I always kept in the barn. Some recreational drugs. I stopped keeping my pills inside the house because every time I was about to take a triple, someone would knock on my bedroom door. I don't know what a triple Now is. they're knocking on my barn door. Well, fine. It's not every day that someone comes to visit your barn. In all the years we worked together, Kendrick never came to visit the house. We drank at bars, went fishing, went to the mountains, even chased off some poachers one time. But he never this, came for dinner with the family. We never up. watched football over here. And now he's brought his friends to visit my barn. I always try to look unsurprised, like it's an everyday thing to get visitors at the old barn. Especially guests with their own personal bodyguards. But Kendrick is sharp enough to see he's caught me with my pants on backwards. Sorry for the surprise, Jack. We saw you from the car. Figured we'd find you in here. I'm going in for a minute, fellas. These guys will wait outside. How long you been dating the lover boys? They're sans people, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're appearing in public with members of the Mafia? Jack, I'm leaving tonight. More like fleeing. Jenny and I are taking the girls and making a run for it. Probably won't be seeing each other again. I've got new documents, a new name, a new life, everything new. The papers say you're still working your last week for the department. I've got to get out today. I won't be getting another chance. Don't know if you noticed, but the whole city is against me. You told your Mafia friends about your plans. Jackie. If I don't fix everything with them in the next few hours, they're going to kill me. And not just me. My family, my relatives, God, Jack, I don't know who else. They found out that I was planning to run and they demanded that we close our contract today. Your contract, Frank? Really? Is that how you talk now? Maybe you should call in the lawyers to straighten all this out. Now is not the time, Jack, please. I have a commitment to them until the end of the year. They need an inside line at police headquarters. I can't just give them back the money. That's not how the Mafia works. If I can't find someone I can trust tonight, I'm dead. You know me, Jack. I wouldn't ask you if I wasn't afraid they'd cut my daughters to Ugh. pieces before sunrise. He's the damn fool who puts his daughters in the crosshairs in the first place. Anyone in my place would have dressed him down good. But I didn't want to pile it on. Fate's already got this guy's soul in the grinder. Oh, no. I thought I'd get more context. Uh, if I agree to help Kendrick, I'm going to get stuck with the Mafia stuff, I think. If I refuse, then I don't know what happens. But... Uh, I have a feeling that's going to come to a good resolution with sand. Oh, man. What would you do, man? 
Um, no. Give him my phone number and tell him it's uh, done. Don't call me. Don't come to work today. I don't want to see or hear from you again. Time for you to go. Jack. I... Get the fuck out of my nice cozy barn, Frank. At the time, I was trying not to think about what just happened. It was almost too much to take in. I'm probably the most popular police chief in the history of the city, and I have to admit, I've thought about that more than once, sometimes with a little pride even. In one of the features they wrote about me in the papers, they said it pretty plain. He catches the criminals. Believe me, high praise like that is unheard of in Freeburg, especially for a cop. And here I am, the person who catches criminals, and I've agreed to help the Mafia, or I'll come home to a it. bag stuffed with my kid's body parts. Right before the last hammer falls. Hey, remember that cop who caught criminals? It turns out he was a Mafia bitch. And all for the sake of a greedy, corrupt cop who should have fled the country years ago. That sound right to you? Uh, I should refuse it, but I have a feeling you get stuck doing it anyway for some reason. It's gonna be hard because I don't have that many police officers. Ooh, what do you want to do? There? Let's do the the blue piano. Yeah. Bud meets Bob. No matter your personal relationship with the city's administration, your police station is at their mercy. In order to maintain reasonable work conditions, you have to send appropriate requests to the mayor. Affairs. City Hall. Decisions for city staff depend on whether they are satisfied with your work. You can send a request every five days. The fool is in charge of the city may refuse outright or un accept only some of your requests, so only ask for what you really need. Oh. Job slot. Oh, what's this? Here's a week's salary. City hopes we don't disappoint. Tomorrow's deadline. Too bad. Eddie's Burgers. Every morning there's a dirty piece of bum sleeping at the cafe. The man refuses to go away and growls at anyone who approaches, scaring all the customers. It's a job for the terrible cops. Touch of Dionysus liquor store. The witness locked on from a window while an armed man with a stocking on his head entered the nearby liquor store. Alright, SWAT. Uh, let's put Powers, Grant, Butch Jr. on it. No, I did it again! That's gonna ask me to figure out what to do. Hot dog vendor reports that he saw two Elvis impersonators grappling right here, so swearing in Spanish and being each other with microphone stands. We'll send you two. I hate you too. I'm firing him. Let's see. Police station. Get out of my life. Fire legally. Can I fire you? No. Uh, she's a little better. Fire right, for shift A. It's this shift, right? Yeah. I shouldn't have. Oh, the shop has two exits from which people have already fled. Enter the store through the main entrance. Drive patrol through the window. Sneak up the back door. The stick up man noticed the police presence and took a cashier hostage. He's holding the gun. The hostage is turning back off or I'll blow off his head. Meanwhile, the cashier is yelling in an unknown language. Robert goes with his nurse. Don't shoot, please. I just need the money. I'll just take a little bit and go. No one was hurt. We're in a body bag. 
Cheer, boy! Uh, what is this? Jack, this is your organism. Uh, I'll wait for that. An antique Chinese necklace was stolen from Bao Ling while she was on the way to the pawn shop. Uh, monster. I don't even have the cops for that. Uh, trying on the beaches of Freeburg and the rest is in the airport. Please, someone to keep an eye on things. I don't. I have one cop. <sighs> Birch and Robbins. Report. I have no cops. Uh, I need better cops on this shift. Gallery. At a gallery exhibition entitled Sex Operation, a gang of young people in ski masks forced away and began smashing exhibits, shouting, We don't need this crap in our city. I need to wait for more cops to come back. Come back. Hurry. I sent too many cops out. Okay. Ooh, it needs five? Somebody's gonna end up getting hurt. I know it. Investigation has started. Bowling the victim. Me and my husband got into a difficult financial situation, and I was going to pawn an antique link necklace, which has been in my family for many centuries. As I was carrying the necklace to the pawn shop, someone ripped the bag from my shoulder and disappeared. I didn't have time to do anything, not even cry out. Miss, Mr. Fisherman, the offender was on a motorcycle. He drove down the road, grabbed the bag, and then escaped. I tried to race after him, but I didn't even have the time to see if it was a man or a woman. I couldn't see his face, but he was dressed in a jacket, like those other bikers who hang out around the street corners. He was definitely not a local biker. They are bald and have beards, but this guy looked Asian. Didn't see a weapon in his hand, just saw him grab the bag and ride off. Okay, I got two terrible cups. Ernest Fitzgerald. We did it, boy. We won. <laughs> Ernest. They got a nice boost. Oh, I'm si I kind of regret firing him now. That Ernest really knows a lot about shooting. He even taught us a thing or two. He invited us out to celebrate victory, so we're taking a day off. <laughs> we deserve it. That's why you're fired. Now I remember. Can I cancel the fire? I feel guilty. Oh. Oh! Two cops caught him when there was supposed to be five. That was... Scary. Oh, nice. So I have three more uh, things. So that, that, and then that. Chinese immigrant expelled from the university. We'll send Vandal and Birch Jr. Might as well level up Birch Jr. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come back. Yeah. A guard went. Out for smoke and saw a teenager wearing sinews on the wall of the building. I chased a bat up a tree. You can take it from here. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll just send Grant. Okay. So I guess it's the end of the day. Robbery. Offender caught. Experience. You're able to arrest all suspects. You got 100 experience. How? He was in a tree! You suck. And we're like the first of a lot of long days. There's just too much going on. <sighs> I need more cops on day shift day. No. Sorry, Birch. Well, those were some bad decisions and some failed opportunities, so I'm going to see how the next day goes. Thank you for watching. Uh, that was a stressful episode, I guess. I'm going to have to live with that, those decisions now. Um, thank you for watching, and goodbye.